Hello, and I'm here to tell you um, how does one find his partner for life or his beshert. It's right now Motsi Shabbos. And um, before I tell you how to find, how some people find their life partner or their beshert in life, um, it's supposed to start with the Baal Shem Tov story. So I'll tell you how the Baal Shem Tov got married also and how he found his Beshirt. So first of all, let me tell you good vach and Shabbat Tov. And let me start. So there was a rabbi named Rabbi Eliezer and his wife was Sava. And they were childless for many, many years. They, um, they, they did um, and that was their best and highest mitzvah that they always did to the exception of every detail of it. Like I explained to you in um, the Gimel um, video uh, that they did Eshel, which is Ochel, Ashtia, and Livia, which is to escort. So they gave the person food, they gave them drink, and they escorted the person out. So, so Rabbi Eliezer and Sava did Achnasos Oche, which is welcoming guests, perfectly with every detail. And they even hired a servant to go to the outskirts of town and wait for guests to come. And if they see any stragglers, please invite them into our house, and they would give them food and drink, and a bed to sleep, and also Rabbi Eliezer would give a generous donation, um, and Sawa would always prepare them a bag to go, uh, a food bag to go for the journey, and they would escort the guests out, okay? So after many, many years of being childless, um, the Malachim up in the Shemaim says, come on, Rashem. They, they, you've got to bless them. They're, they're so kind and they're such generous people. Let them have a son. And so, obviously, when you have um, angels that are for you, you have angels against you. So the bad angel says, no way, you cannot just let them have um, um, you know, a, um, a, a baby. No way. Um, I want to test them. I want to test them. I bet you they'll fail. So Eliyahu Hanavi says, oh no, you're not going to test them because you're going to give them a test way beyond their powers, beyond their limits, and you're going to trick them and you're going to make them fail. I am going down there and I will test them. And everybody up in the Shemaim agreed and Eliyahu Hanavi was on his way. So as he was walking, it was Shabbos, and he had a knapsack, and he was dressed in very um, drenchy clothes, uh, um, like, like you know, an, a, a poor person um, clothes, and tattered, and he knocks on their door, and it's Shabbos, and Eliezer, Baba Eliezer opens the door, and Eliyahu Nevi, who's dressed as a papa, comes in and says, good Shabbos. So they knew that he knows about Shabbos, but yet he desecrated it by walking and carrying his knapsack, whatever. They welcomed him, in, welcomed, him, welcomed him in and gave him to eat and to drink and a place to sleep. And then came Motsi Shabbos and he wants to go. And Rabbi Eliezer and Sawa so said, please don't go out on Motsi Shabbat. It's too dangerous. Um, go in the morning. And he said, insists, no, I have to go home now. So Eliezer gives him a donation, a nice generous one. And Sawa so prepares him a pack to go for the journey. And they walk with him all the way to the escorts of town. Just before he's ready to go and they're re returning home, Eliyahu Hanavi reveals himself to them and said, I am Eliyahu Hanavi 
and I came here to test you. I want you to know that you passed the test and you are going to have a baby boy. Your baby's name is going to be Israel and he's going to be the light of all Israel. And he's going to be a very pious person. And they were very excited. So Eliezer grows up. And for, I mean, the Baal Shem Tov grows up and his name is Israel. Um, then his father passes away and his mother passes away at a very young age. And he has to say Kaddish for his dad at a very young age. So let's move the story faster. And so he's 20 years old and he gets to marry a, a wife by the name of Chava. But Chava also passes away at a very young age and now he's really very, very sad. And then he's now much older and he moves um, to a different city, to Brody. And over there, there's a, a Rabbi Ephraim. And Rabbi Ephraim has a big dispute with another man and he wants to have somebody judge. And by then, Israel the Baal Shem Tov became the judge of that city. And Rabbi Ephraim decided to go with this, this other man to him to get judged to the Baal Shem Tov. The Baal Shem Tov seeing with Ruch HaKodesh that Ephraim's daughter is going to be his wife. He saw in the, in the, in the Ruch HaKodesh. So before accepting what's going on, he decided to talk to him about the Torah and then they discussed heavy matters, uh, difficulties in the Torah, and they would talk just to show Rabbi Ephraim that, that um, the Baal Shem Tov, that he himself is a learned person and he's a Zohar, he could marry his, his sister. So after the dispute and everything is arranged, Rabbi Ephraim says to the Baal Shem, by the way, would you do me a favor? I have a sister and she's divorced. And I know you're a woody Your wife passed away. Would you like to marry her? And the Baal Shem Tov said, yes. And this is how the Baal Shem Tov himself got a, a shidduch. And now let's move to this world here now. I had a friend that used to pick me up uh, from a bus stop uh, to my math class. Instead of taking two buses, I would take one bus and stop, and the next bus stop should pick me up and take it. We both had a class at eight o'clock in the morning at City College, and this is way back when I was in my 20s. So we were talking, and she told me how she met her, her um, husband, and she says that her friends took her ski. She has never skied in her life. Never, never, never. They put her on skis. There's something called a ski lift or a chair where the chair takes you up the mountain. And then just before you have a few seconds to get off the chair. And then guess what you do? You have to come skiing down the mountain because that's the only way you get off the mountain. So she got into the skis. She went up the chair lift. And as she got there, she had to come off. She came off and she, she has her sticks and her friend says, now ski. She says, but how? I don't know how. They went off and she tried to ski. She went. Before you know it, one of her skis is off and she landed right into one of the trees. And that's who st stopped. She got stopped by, by a tree. And snow has covered her up, and, and she has one ski off, one ski on. She can't move, and she's stuck there. This is before cell phones. This is before everything. This, this was um, in the 1970s, uh, so late 70s. So she's stuck. All of a sudden, a, a passer, and some people are just passing her by as if nothing. One passerby stops and says, are you okay? She says, no, I'm not. But if you take me down the mountain, I'll buy you a beer. So 
He did. And guess what? They're happily married. Okay, I'll tell you another one. The other one is about, about someone at the cartel. Okay, so this is a little bit longer, but I hope you'll follow. But it's a beautiful story. And this is what happens. Um, a family about, you know, they're not religious. They've never been to the Kota, so they leave America to go visit the Kota. What, what is this Kota all about? What's happening here? Why is it so special and all this? They know nothing. They're just Jewish, but they know nothing. So they had their son, Benny, who was a married yet, and he was definitely marriageable age. So they went to the Kota. And they saw Friday night. They couldn't believe the singing. They couldn't believe the atmosphere. Something inside them was on fire, and they loved it. Well, they met a mad man there, and the man says, Who are you? What are you? Come, come to my house for Shabbos. And um, they said, Okay, we don't even know what Shabbos is, but Benny and his parents went to this house. When they got there, they had a beautiful meal and she sang Shalom Aleichem and Kiddush and everything. Then they started talking. And Norit is the, uh, the wife. And she was talking to Benny. But she was putting Benny in his place. Everything he talked about Hashem or Shabbos or mitzvahs or anything he, he said, she put him in his place. No, that's not right. This is the way it is. No, this is not. And it was like fire in that house, arguing and talking about being religious. And, and so it ended and Benny and his parents left and they went, as they were walking, the mother says to Benny, so Benny, tell me, what kind of a wife would you like to marry? And Benny says, I want someone exactly like Norit. And the both parents at the same time says, what? She's already married. He says, yeah, but I want a wife exactly like Norit. She, she's, she's amazing. She's so dedicated to, 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 um, to Hashem and, and dedicate to the mitzvah. She's, she's real. She's, she's a real person. So they said, okay. So time passed and they came back to America. Meantime, Norit and her husband get divorced because they don't have any children. Norit, um, yeah, she divorces and she decides to go back to school. And finish her degree, but she changes her, 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 um, married name to her maiden name. So, um, so she comes back to the States to, to finish her degree. So then, meantime, Benny becomes Baal and he became religious and now he's keeping Shabbos and he's keeping mitzvahs. He's putting on tefillin. It's amazing. He's doing all these things. He goes back to the hotel. He goes back to that house that he had his very first Shabbos in, knocks on the door, and finds, finds out that Norit's not there anymore. So where's Norit? Where, where could she have gone? Where, where, where is she? she find, he finds out her parents, and he goes to his parents, and the parents says, yeah, Norit got divorced, and She's in the States at this and this university and back, whatever. And this is her name. So it took a long time. He goes back to the States and he's searching for Nareed all over. Meantime, uh, the parents, Benny's parents, always invite guests over for Shabbos, young singles. And lo and behold... Who do you think is at the Shabbos table? Coincidentally, Norit. Norit and Benny meet, and guess what? I myself saw them at um, Betzalel's shul with many little children, 
And um, I got to hear the story firsthand from them. So this is how they met, even though she was married before. He, Benny already met his wife-to-be. Funny story, right? Anyway, there's another story about, um, I, hope I, get, I hope I say this right. There was a, a young girl who's ready to go for a shirah, and she gave a whole list to her father. I don't want this. I don't want this. I don't want this. I don't, and for sure, I want no payers. I want to marry somebody with no payers. That's that's a for sure, kavua. So the father said, but listen, just go out with this person. I promise you, if you don't like the way he looks, fine. Don't, don't marry him, but just give him a chance, okay? Just give him a chance. So the father obviously has a shidduch for her and he has long pairs, right? But anyway, father is taking a chance that maybe, maybe she'll, she'll fall in love or whatever. So the, 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 the cow pulls up and the daughter goes into the cow and Sure enough, they hit it off, and um, they like each other, and everything's going great. And every time the girl comes back, and the father says, "No, how was it?" And she says, "No, he's great, he's great, he's great," and everything. The father doesn't say a word. Everything goes great. Sure enough, there's an engagement. It's a vote, and the father sees the son, the the the. the the chassid, the, the chatan to be, the, you know, and the daughter together. And he's he's seeing him and he says, wait a minute, where was your payers? You had payers, what happened to it? And he says, well, before going on the shidduch, I decided to get a haircut. And I was uh, getting a haircut, but I didn't pay attention. And the barber cut one of my payers off. So then I had to cut the other one off as well. And the father says, oh, my goodness. And um, and then he goes to the daughter. Oh, oh, did you see this? And then the, the daughter says, I don't care if he has pears or doesn't have pears. He's a great guy. But do you see how Hashem did that? That for the Shidduch time while they were dating, he had no pears. I think that was a funny story. I hope you'll enjoy now I have another funny and last story to tell you about a washwoman with five kids. Uh-huh. A washwoman with five kids. Okay. She was no washwoman, though. Um, so this is the Shadach. Um, there was a woman who was divorced with five children. And there was a man who was divorced with one child. And a Shadach was made. And they asked the woman... Um, to go out with this man and you're going to meet him at such and such a place. Um, and they, they told the, the man that you're going to go out with this woman with five children. And he says to them, to the shatran, to the matchmaker, no way, I'm not going out with that woman with five children. She, she must be just a washwoman, you know, she must be awful stress. No way, I'm not going out with that woman. And the matchmaker says, please, his name was David, please just do me a favor. Just meet her and please go to the, to the um, get together of singles. And if you don't like her, you'll meet somebody else. But at least go for five minutes and speak to her. So that day finally came and um, they were going to meet. And as they're walking up, the Shatran says, uh, Yael, this is David, and David, this is Yael. In Yael's head, she's thinking, oh my God, what a snob. And David is thinking in his mind, oh my gosh, and typical Israeli, you know. I don't know what a typical Israeli is, but whatever. He's totally biased. So anyway. David goes inside after 10 minutes of talking. And sure enough, the talk, Ellen and David are talking for two and a half hours. And sure enough, they get married. 
David is my husband, and I'm your L. And thank God now we're married for 29 years. But David refused to go out with me because in his head he thought marrying somebody with five children, he would not see a put-together, organized, beautiful young lady. And I did not think marrying such an older guy would um, would be good for me. But thank God it is. And this is my David. Hi. I encourage you all to find good shidduchim like I did. Then you can worry about getting fat from your spouse's good food. And here we're going on 29 years. And we had five more children, which brings up the total to 11 beautiful children. I want to wish you a good um, Shavuot Tov and a good Vach. We should only share in Simchas. Thank you. Thank you for listening and enjoy. And I hope if you're not married, give you a bracha that you should find your bashet, your partner for life very, very soon.